What up, everybody? Let's talk about it. This is The Passage, Season 1, Episode 8. All right, look like we got things that's on and popping now. We finally getting a little bit of action. It was a lot of oh, ooh, ah, cringeworthy moments in this whole episode that I thought were really good, so let's go ahead and get started. Start off with Amy reading a book. She's reading her book while Fannin comes in, and he's trying to, you know, talk to her and give her the game and run it on her. He's like, how did you do all of this? So he's talking about the world that she created. He says that it's very detailed. They have She got creeks in the floor, so apparently, you know, in your mind you're creating these places that are familiar to you she says she had help and he was like well who helped you and he she says carter now carter is anthony if y'all haven't figured that out but that's his last name and um he she says that he's a good guy he told her that she was special and that uh he told her that fandom was going to try to hurt her and he says that Listen, he had to be a little, you know, rough in his approach with Anthony because what he is there to do, it takes a lot of moxie to be in their family. So he had to make sure that he was up to the task. But he not really like that. You know what I'm saying? He ain't really like that. He had to make sure that he was ready. She's like, ready for what? And he's like, the end is near. Um, he thinks that she's truly amazing and he wants to be her friend. Outside of the vision, we see that Amy is very sick. Um, the doctors are rushing her somewhere, and Clark is just looking on. He's trying to figure out or wondering what's happening. And then Shauna comes to him and says to him that he won't make it out alive without her. This is like her third or fourth time telling him that, y'all. Then we see Sykes going to Gillum, and she's trying to say, you know, where are they taking her? You know, they should have told her before they moved her. And, and he's like, listen, I don't have to tell you anything. I'm over the facility. You know, I'm doing what I do, bitch. Mind your business. Look, we had high hopes for her, but she's obviously getting sick. So she starts telling him about something she can do. They can treat it like AIDS and goes on and on. And he tell her, look, ain't you tired of experimenting with people like, what about your coworkers? What about Miss Lear? What about this person and that person who died? he do have a point like in their respect or whatever we about to move her down in the dungeon with the rest of the walking dead so it is what it is thank you but it's just time to you know i'm about to reboot this whole program don't even worry about it you about to go home girl don't even worry about it then we see gilliam he's talking to martinez the security person about amy and getting him a job you know after this is all over he gonna get him a job you know hook him up he makes an announcement to everybody that project Noah is over basically this is their last day you know they all had high hopes but it's not working out so there's he's trying to get them a bonus they can relax they can party everybody can go home later on go back to their family so Clark confronts him about this and he tells he tells him that you know we shouldn't be doing this you're basically telling everybody to go home and now is not the time for us to do that and William says listen I'm about to reboot this shit I don't want to squander this opportunity for all the potential that the program could possibly have okay so I'm doing what I'm doing and you don't need to worry about it no more pack your bags you're going home today Sykes sees Clark and she tells him that she needs to get into that lab to see if she can make an antiviral and they need to get Amy out of there. So when he goes to swipe her into the lab, his security clearance doesn't work anymore. She says, how can we override the system? And he's like, well, we need Gilliam to override the system. Where he at? He upstairs. All right, we about to go get his ass. How long is it going to be before Amy turns? Then we're back with Fannin and Amy, and she swats him away when he tries to touch her. Like, she don't want to, she not here for the bullshit. She says that she don't want to hurt people. She wants the agent. She want her people. Like, she want her family. You know what I'm saying? He says lately, he has a family too, and uh, lately all the family does is talk about her and how special she is. And she tell him, I don't want to be in your damn family, okay? I don't want to be out here eating people up. And he says, you are changing. I know you can feel it on the inside, and once you start changing, you know, once you start changing for real you gonna um need somebody to help you get through or understand what's happening to you and i'll be here and she tells him i just want you to get the hell out of my house so he gets up to leave and he tells her the end is coming now girl holla at me when it happened you know if you just holla at me i'm gonna be right here and i'm gonna come running okay she wakes up and she realizes that she is restrained and she is now in the dungeon with the rest of the walking dead po baby and it was interesting that when she saw the other people in the you know like shauna in particular she like coiled up a little bit it, like almost like she was sad for the little girl because she a little girl that was pretty interesting to me we with anthony and fanning now so anthony tells him to stay away from Amy and that she's better off dead. Fannin is like, I didn't put her here in this situation. I didn't go find her. I didn't pick her for this. You know, they did. And now she's turning and he wants to help her. Okay? And says that he hate him. He can't stand what he turned him into and what he has become. 
Fanning says, if Amy doesn't turn, they won't be able to get out of there. They need 12 people to get out of there. Amy will turn. She will be the 12, and they're going to get the hell up out of there. Brad Sykes, Clark, and Lila get Gilliam, okay? They, they hold him at gunpoint. They get him to let him in the elevator to go down to the dungeon. Clark says, make sure that they see. Check to make sure that all the people that's supposed to be holding down there, because if you, I didn't say this in the last review, but after they figured out that Lawrence, the janitor dude, was the one who stuck um miss lear who stuck elizabeth they put him in a holding cell down in the bottom of the you know in the dungeon or close to the dungeon or whatever they supposed to be flashback shauna has escaped and clark finds her on the side of the road and he's trying to convince her to come back to the facility of course she's telling him no um he's telling her they got a fence they got cops or gps on you they got snipers etc etc um, she says she don't want to go back, and so he says, well, they should just go have a bite to eat. And we flash to the present, and he says, make sure to let them know if Lawrence is down there or not. They get into the lab, and Amy is, seems to be stable for the moment, okay? And the ladies, Lila and Sykes, they're working on a solution together, some type of antiviral. They explain it, child, and I don't understand none of what they was explaining, so I'm not even trying about to re-explain it to y'all, okay? So Brad is with Amy. He's trying to talk to her. Um, he's trying to get her out of the restraints, um, and she says no. She fights him and tells him don't do it because she feels like she could be dangerous. Then we see Lacey hitching a ride with a truck driver. She asks her where she's going. She said, oh, I'm going to the same place. And she said it must be some type of divine intervention. So Lacey is, to me, going to be somebody who's going to come through in the clutch. She going to, you know, come through right at the moment we need her to come through because now she has seen her mission to protect Amy from, you know, whatever bad is coming to her. Clark going downstairs, and they having a party, honey. They are getting their party on for the last day of work, honey. And he says that he has found out that Lawrence is not in his cell, okay? He's not in his holding cell. Then we see Lawrence downstairs banging up an electrical board, some type of electrical board. Now, Clark goes down there and catches him, and he says he's doing what he is told, what he was told to do. He says, you know, everybody is doing what we're told to do. You know, what did Shauna tell you to do? And that, that touched the nerve with Clark, and Clark went on and punched him straight out. We went back into a flashback, and Shauna and Clark are at the diner. They order their food, and she's talking to him. You know, she's charming him about he's an enigma, and he follows the rules, and he tells her that he's the black sheep of his family. His sister works high in the Justice Department, and his brother is a neurosurgeon, or his brother is like a doctor. And, um... He works, he, you know, he's in the military. And his uh, father was a judge, a federal judge. She's like, listen, tell me something real about yourself. Then he tells her he has a degree in creative writing. Who would have thought Clark is a poet? Okay, the poet laureate of Project Noah, bitch. He joined the Marines, and that's where why he is where he is right now. So she says she would read his poems. Oh, baby, she is working him, okay? Shauna is working him. And then we're in the present. So we seeing uh, the two ladies say the virus is too smart, and they, they discuss discussing the antiviral they're trying to make and how they're going to make it. If every virus has a lock, a different lock that it's going to, we're going to change the locks. Some they was trying to say, child. And the ability and immunity will stay with her, but she will not turn into a viral. Be back to Amy and Fannin. And Amy says that she doesn't feel right, okay? And he like, listen, you about to turn, girl. She says, well, what about the feelings? You know, I feel everything that's going on, everybody's feelings in this whole place. And he's like, well, they don't go away. That's just something that, that won't go away um but all the feelings don't have to be bad they can be good and this is when they get up to go walking she's like good like what and she's following him clark and he asks gilliam what does lawrence why does lawrence have security access like on you know filtered security access he a damn janitor why do he have access to everything and Gilliam is like, hell no, I ain't give him no access to everything. Fuck is you talking about? Clark says, well, somebody gave him access to everything, baby, because he has destroyed all our communication board. That's what that was, the communication board. Okay, we like, you know, we out here by ourselves. We like sitting ducks or whatever. And he was like, listen, if I took um, clearance away from you, I damn sure ain't give him no clearance. I didn't give him no clearance. Well, who did? Who got the codes? Martinez got the codes. He a new security guy the government sent down in X, Y, and Z. Okay, but where he at? He upstairs. So we're going to go get him.
He also takes Gray with him so he can use his retinal scan, his eyes, to get into wherever he's trying to get to. Brad, and he unties Amy. She lets him untie her. And he asks her, you know, to hold on and just keep on. And she's like, you know, she's starting to get sick. You know, one of her teeth comes out. Now we can see that she's really starting to turn, okay? She's just crying and going through, child, po thing. So we with Fannin and Amy again, and they're walking through the woods, and he said he's showing her what's possible, that, you know, being a viral doesn't always have to be gross and scary. It can be magical. And she said she don't want to hurt people. Like, that's not what she want to do. Um, That's what Winston was doing. He was hurting people. And he said don't want, she don't want to hurt the agent. And he says, well, you know, you can keep somebody with you forever. You know, there's one person you can take with you, so if you want him, he can be with you forever. She said that Carter said, don't trust you. And then she get distracted because she sees her bike off in the distance. So she like, is this a trick? And after she look at the bike, he like, nah, you know what I'm saying? It ain't no trick, girl, no. On the present side, on you know, outside of the dream, we see that they're drawing her blood and Brad is asking why. And Lila says, well, an antiviral has to work with her blood and we want to make sure it's doing what it needs to do. He calls, he tells Sykes that Amy has lost a tooth and Sykes is like, listen, at this point, we got to keep moving forward because there's nothing we can do. She's turning right now. Mark and Shauna, we back in another flashback and, um... She's like, have you ever wanted to bail? Have you ever wanted to just leave? And he was like, yeah, of course I've wanted to leave before, but you know, it's my duty to stay here. She was like, no, don't be trying to walk the feeling back. You know, and they go back and forth. And he said, oh, you so endearing. And you can tell that he really likes her. And she says, oh, I know you was a good guy, you know, and all under that. And he tells her that his dad was also a drunk and his dad beat him. So this is something that they have in common. So they really make a connection bond off of that moment or whatever. He says, well, what about you? And um, she's like, listen, and we can leave right now and we don't have to ever come back. Bitch, hell no. You gonna turn into a goddamn vampire and eat my ass up, bitch. He, he ain't crazy. He like, mm-mm, girl, mm-mm, I don't know about that, sis. Guards coming up in the background. They walking in the restaurant and she looking back like, well, damn, you ain't have to do me like that or whatever. She going on with the guards. Clark and Gray talk to the guard or Clark is there. Gray is just standing up against the wild child, but Clark is talking to the guard about who Martinez is and how many times he's seen him. And he was like, man, you know, I've only seen him like once or twice. He like a ghost, you know, like he'll never be here. And so that clicked for Clark in his mind and he drags Gilliam to the basement child only to find out that the, that the person he think is Martinez is one of these other virals. Cause you know, it's 12 of them or 11 of them in there. And we only see like three or four of them. So it's a whole bunch of other the ones down there and he said and he had never took the time to walk down there and see who they are and look at their face bitch and the whole thing was martinez telling him what to do now he done got access to all the codes done changed all the security protocols child and don't nobody know it but the virus child he done fucked up the thing okay <laughs> Shout out to Dundee. Clark is realizing that the virals have cut off the communications to the outside world. They have also changed all the security protocols, so shit is about to get real. So he's telling Brad that he has an idea, and so his idea was basically to like gas them and sedate all the um the virals in the in a cell, so they would go to sleep, I guess, so they could do whatever they need to do. So that's what they was doing for right now. Right, Shauna steps onto the elevator when Clark gets on the elevator, and he she asks him about does he remember the night at the diner, and he says. Is, yes he does he absolutely remembers um but you already know that and um he's telling her don't do this this is not you i know this is not you you know and she's like well you made me you know you put me in the cage and now i want to get out the cage that's not happening girl you're not about to get out the cage and she says we are going to get out the cage bitch because people like you and people like lawrence they help us he was like i haven't helped you and she was like boy you stayed my execution you lied about the dreams um you have helped me and if you want safe passage, I'm telling you, you're going to need me. He kisses her. And then he tells her he does care, but not about her, not about this new bitch. He care about the one that's from Vegas, that had the bad life, the nice girl. He cares about her. But right now, she is a monster. And if he have the chance, he gonna kill her ass. That seemed to, you know, make her a little bit sad. But I was like, okay, it's about time he realized that this hoe is a monster and she will eat his ass for lunch, okay? Clark gets off the elevator and he rounds up the troops and he says, get everybody out of here, basically. Everybody, I don't care if they drunk, whatever. If you see something that don't look like a human, shoot it to kill. Or a child working his hand. 
I thought he was trying to kill himself at first, but then I see he's trying to get out of the restraints and he cut his wrist like to the point where like he probably could have almost died. But I don't know if he's infected too or they just really got control over his mind because they made it a point to see when he walked out the room that there was blood on the window where he put his handprint. If y'all haven't noticed, I think that Lawrence is a little bit mentally challenged. I don't know if he's on the autism spectrum or what they're trying to, you know, show us that he's mentally challenged and he's a little bit more susceptible to being controlled than some of the other people because he don't have his 100% mental capacity. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's why he's so gung-ho. So he got his ass up out of there, baby, and walked straight up out the room. He ain't let nobody out, child. He just walked straight up out the room. In the lab, Sykes and Lila are putting the antiviral in her blood together and baby, guess what? It worked. I was like, come through, bitches. So they found a way to make her not turn but her keep all the good stuff of the virals, right? So they putting the shit together and making the doses for her and getting it all together right and lila runs out to get something out the room and then um she don't she walk by the, the room and don't see the handprint on the wall child i said uh oh it's about to be a bad situation sykes trying to get into the lab and she don't have access lawrence as done got up in that lab and blocked her from getting access to the lab child and so he goes around the corner, he see Lila coming back with whatever she was coming back with, and he attacks her, knock her upside the head, right? He goes down there to where Gilliam is, and he gets his security card out of his pocket, and Gilliam is like, don't do this, we don't have to do this, why would you do this? You know, trying to talk him out of it, and he like, listen, I don't have no choice, okay, and neither do you, or something like that, and he walk on through and, and, and go on in there. And so then we see Amy and Fannin again. They're still walking, and they're now they're standing in front of a tunnel. And he said the tunnel leads to something beautiful. You know, she said she don't feel good. And he was like, you know, if you want to feel better, you need to walk through the tunnel and be reborn on the other side. And Amy, um, and you know, outside of the vision, Amy is with Brad. She's fading. And he tells Sykes this. And Sykes is locked in the lab. She tell him I'm locked. You know, Lawrence got out. He locked me in the lab. I can't go nowhere. She says, well, at some point, there's nothing that we're going to be able to do. She's going to have to make the decision either to go be a viral or to die. And he was like, okay. You can tell that he was really sad, but he was just like, okay. So then we are back in the vision and Amy is going into the tunnel and Brad is talking to her at the same time on the outside of the vision and he tells her, you know, I know you promised to never leave me and I will never leave you, but if you come to a fork in the road, you will... It's okay for you to break that promise, okay? It's okay for you to let go. And so she's she's riding through the tunnel at this same time, and she stops in the middle, and she gets off the bike, and she's crying, and she um, pulls out the matches that her mother gave her from the last episode when she told her she was a light, and she was like the sun, and this was to light her path. And we just seeing all these montages of different moments of people encouraging her, Brad telling her that she can do anything she want to do. She's smart. She's fast. We saw her scream again and blow the man back blow winston back she draws from that energy of all the people encouraging her and telling her that she's special and she get her ass on that bike and turn back around i said bitch you better do it you better choose the light girl you better do it little sis okay little sis did it lawrence gets whatever it is or the key to the hall all of you know the sales and so he about to wake everybody up at the same time this is all happening at the same time lawrence is you know about to unlock the key and let all the virals out okay and um she wakes up after she makes a decision she wakes up and she say listen we got to get the hell up out of here right now. Lawrence is turning the key, child, and the virus is about to be out, honey. Sykes tells Clark, um, and he's like, listen, hide in the lab, get down, okay? He says, um, he tells all the people, get the guns, go to the armory, bitch. We about to shoot everybody in this motherfucker, okay? We about to get the blasting on niggas out here. So, and Brad gets Amy, he drags Gilliam, and he almost shoots Fannin, but the door is closed on Fannin before he can shoot him in the head, and they just banging on the thing. You can tell they about to get out of there some type of way. Amy turns around, and her eyes turn yellow, and I was like, yes, bitch, blow they ass back blow them all the way back baby so i'm excited this was a good episode and next week is the season finale so i guess this is when they're gonna break out and this is when she's starting to get real and amy gonna show some powers like i'm here for it i'm here for 
Um, what's really interesting to me is Anthony's character, y'all. That's the most interesting part of this whole thing is Anthony's character and the fact that he is a viral, but, like, he's not happy about being a viral and if that's going to affect, you know, how he eat people in the future, okay? Because, obviously, he can't express all these feelings, you know, being the walking dead, bitch. But in the vision world, okay, so, you know, is he still going to be eating motherfuckers? Like, do he going to be feeling guilty about eating people and shit? So, I want to hear what you guys thought about this episode. I thought it was a really good episode. Probably the best one of the whole season. We finally get some action don't going forget on. to like comment and subscribe um share my video with all your friends if you want to follow me on social media you can at who is april dawn at who is april dawn um i will holler at y'all next week peace